Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of EverQuest Old School. On tonight's episode, we are going to be playing over here in East Commons. I'm AC Gamer, and I have a really good friend with me. We have Chupa. Hey, everybody. And he's playing his rogue. Now, I did tell you guys that my Necro was going to be solo play, and for the most part, that is going to be uh, completely and totally true. However, we wanted to try something a little different. Some of the classes out there, like Enchanters, they duo with another class, uh, mostly, uh, you know, clerics or somebody who can heal their pets or their charm pet, anyways. With the Necromancer, what is the class that you can duo with? We're going to give it a shot with a rogue with the combination of Snare and Fear. And backstab should be pretty epic, I think. Now, have, have you done this before? Do you? Um... Nope. I've always wanted to try it though. <laughs> so we're gonna give it a shot. Uh, we're gonna come up here to the top. This is where I usually sit up here along the the, the rim. And that one little wolf that you kind of saw the corpse of, he spawns over here. So he's a little bit of a nuisance when he actually uh, pops up. Do you want me to uh, pull back here? Let me go ahead and sit my pet here. Yeah, completely up to you at, uh, if you want to do it that way. Um, let's let's try it that way first. If it doesn't work out too well, I still have so uh, so. I mean, right. Either way. Yeah, that's one of the downsides to this character is I, he doesn't have a lot of money yet. He hasn't gone to any of these money cash camps that people have talked about. And I think the very first thing that I do buy when I have the money is going to be J boots because I have seen in these wide open areas just how effective that one little buff has made in his ability to pull mobs without taking a lot of damage and his ability to survive getting away from mobs that will otherwise wreck his face. So we got a Griffon over here. Let's try to get him. Do you have you ever tried hunting over at the gorge entrance area or near the village? No, no, I'm kind of new to this zone altogether. I've only tried this one area right here, and I do know that the crack spiders at a later level when I'm a little higher oh, would yeah. also be pretty good. Oh, yeah. We can go after we kill this Griffon. Let's just try over there. There's a lot of gorge hounds that go over that way and um, asps, asps, the snakes. Poison? Yeah, okay. Yeah, snakes. I'll give that a shot. But with the way, the way that we're doing it, I think we should be okay there. It's, it's not as long of a pull. Well, so. you know, they, they come over here, too, a little closer, so it's really not a long pull. Plus, if I don't pull a Griffon, who seems to be a lot faster than most mobs, I, d I normally don't take any hits on the pool. But I do notice that with a Spirit of Wolf, the leeway is a lot greater, and I love that. Yeah, this guy. I think these these dudes run almost at so speed. And you guys so, are wrecking let me, face. Let me go, let me go pull. Right let me go pull. I still have so. I'll take advantage of it right now. I'm going to pull another Griffon. His only downside with you is I guess you can't really heal yourself, but I can. Uh, Got some sexy on. <laughs> I can toss some uh, some life on you. I don't have the spell up at the moment, but. Nah, don't awesome. worry about it. If, if I take hits, I'll just switch out some gear and and you know I me. Mean. You know what I'm saying? You know oh, I'm saying? that's right, because he has a fungi guy. So. Shh. Don't tell him. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and uh, snare him. He's my pet. Yeah, Come on, get, get him that angry. Time. Get him angry. Mm. Backstabs. I love it. I love it. And I am not going to use too many dots. Only thing I would say I, is be, be careful when you go over to that bridge. There is that guard that spawns over there. And I don't believe the mask actually changes your faction that you would get attacked from it. But he will attack me as my pet. I think he attacks me too because just because of Rogue. He's a uh, he's a paladin. So he's, he's a good two shoes. He's, he's, he's an a, asshole. Yeah, I was going to say he's a butt. He's never actually yeah. killed me yet, but he's there. You can hunt him down here shortly. Oh, yeah, I've seen people over there. I think I still need another two or three levels before that's going to be a thing. And he does spawn like every six minutes, so the spawn timer on him is not horrible. Let's say it's dude not here. Come on, man. My slashing weapon hits for garbage, but it's got some good haste. I need to find some new gloves. Now, I have been left a lot of comments on ideas on how to play the Necromancer. Some of you guys have suggested that I don't use fear to, you know, fear kite these guys around. Also, not to cast my leech at the very end of the fight because it's not quite mana efficient for the reason that it's not doing damage and giving me life at the same time. Whereas if I cast it at the very beginning of the fight, I can do both. So you get a little bit more out of your mana wise. I am going to be trying all those techniques out, seeing what works for me and what doesn't, and eventually settling down on a strategy that tends to work in the area that I'm in. Now I do know when you go to different spots, that's supposed to change. 
you know, something I'm kind of looking forward to is uh, Misty. And Chuba, you said you've kind of seen people over there killing them, or at least the guards are, are dead on the ground when you run by sometimes. Yeah, I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know if they're root rotting or what, because by that time, you, I don't know if they're going in the 30s or whatever. You have root at 34, I believe. Um, I think I, I have, have an no undead root right now. It. Yeah, yeah, Hungry Earth is level 16. So we're getting some reavers over here. Go ahead and put my oh, leech. so is leaving. Boo. <laughs> I'm surprised this dude with his outfitted as he is, you don't have J-Boots on him. Uh, those are expensive still. Yeah. Well, you know what I could do instead of getting the J-Boots is I could just go ahead and pop for some of those potions. I think that would be yeah. worth it. Yeah, because, I mean, you're paying 100 uh, per, and plus, you know, me and Nano can make them anyway, so I just get the mats and well, I can't make them yet, but I, I plan on making them soon. Right. Um, you just give me a lot of the mats, and we'll we'll take care of it for you. I think that's ZK, what I plan on. That's what I plan on doing. I think ZK, a really good friend of ours that used to have a shaman, said that uh, with the materials cost, they were actually only around like seventy plat. So you make about thirty plat extra by selling yep. the, the hundred. But seventy plat's not too bad. That's that's actually pretty doable. I think depending on your charisma, yes, yeah, about sixty six and change plat per stack of uh, per, per material for a 10 dose which isn't bad at all honestly we are just wrecking these dudes that is the wrong wrong ability what'd you try to do oh he resisted uh, I was backstabbing him when he was facing me <laughs> I didn't see, even need to fear that numbers, guy man. you see the numbers uh, oh I see goodness. his life dropping dramatically oh my goodness 82 oh Thank you, Thigh Master. It's almost like, why do I need to snare them or fear them? I just let you do your thing out there. Send my pet in for a little bit extra tauntage. Let me uh, let me change back so that way. I, honestly, we can do that. We can just face tank these things if you want. I think for some of them. I mean, did you want to try that other area, or do you yeah. have to be over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, mean, I got, I got a dark, dark stalker over here. Oh, I'm on my way to you. He's the the one that spawns over here. That always seems to get me. I never remember. Tap him a little bit for your health, bro. Well, let me put fear on him first. Come here, Fido. Yeah, I kind of like leech over my direct life draw. I think it's more mana efficient, and it seems to do just a better job of me not getting the aggro right off the bat. Yeah, um, you're going to notice here in about four levels, five levels, it's going to taper off in feasibility. I mean, it's, it's five hit points, right? Um, let's see. Leech is eight damage. Eight damage? Okay, yeah. Um, it, at 29, you get a 21 damage one. Make sure you don't get near the rings. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a 21 damage one, and it, oh my goodness, that change is very nice. Well, I do know even with the direct damage one, that one goes up too, and I, I've seen where it does. Necros have been down at like 20% of life, and they're not even concerned because they do one leech, or not one leech, one, uh, Life Life siphon, yeah, and they're all the mm -hmm. way back up to full again. Probably they more than good. that one is Looking even. Good. Which one where? One right in front of us. You don't see him? Oh, he oh the uh he Oh, was it an actual wolf or something? Yeah, it was a gorge. Oh, he's right here. I don't know if he's bugged. He's like standing right there. He's not moving. Let's see if I can cast him. Oh yeah, no, he's, he's not bugged. He's, there. he's not bugged. Good, yeah, get, get his attention. There you go. Mm. <laughs> you just want me to be able to let you back. Oh my goodness. Yeah, don't don't uh don't get hurt too much. He oh, was just wow. again, yeah, twice. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just uh back up and sit down. Make sure you get plenty of space though. Tap it. Yeah, look at that. Come on, leech land. Now, I know I said, you know, we weren't going to do that at the end, but I need a little bit extra life, and I'm going to go ahead and siphon some of my mana back, so let's get this going, because I'm down to 15% mana at the moment. Um, Just in the pit in for the next few ones. I'm going to get this with this one right here, too. All right. Just in the just in the pit in. Don't worry about doing anything else right now. Well, he does have taunt on, so if you don't oh. take too much damage. I'm coming, to coming towards you. Oh, do you want me to take, follow you out there? I don't know where you're Yeah, yeah, to we're going to keep going. Okay. We're going to keep going. Yeah, if you let the pet get a little bit of aggro right off the bat, you'd be able to do your uh, backstab immediately. 
yeah, I'm trying to do um, trying to do evade every so often, just in case. Do you have any throwing daggers or? No, I don't have any of that stuff now. Oh, okay. Let's actually keep my uh, inventory up. This is so easy. This is so much easier than normal with the uh, with the necromancer. But you are right. There are a lot more gorge hounds over here than there were on the other side. Maybe too many. This a little. It little gets nasty in the rumors. middle. Yeah, you definitely want to move over towards the actual gorge entrance this way. Bandits uh, are green. No, there's a. Uh... The name guy is blue. Yeah. Bad faction, I imagine. Uh, I don't know. They're bandits, so I mean, kill them all for all I care. Well, I mean, you know, you're you're not <laughs> necessarily evil, even though you're playing the part right now. I'm a thief. <laughs> it's not necessarily evil. It's like a bard. I think a bard would be a little bit. Uh, when we get over here, I'm going to let you get your mana back. I'm going to go AFK for a few minutes just to tuck one of the kids in. All right, man. No worries. But this is kind of cool. Like, do you think this is uh, feasible at higher levels? Um, I th I'm live. I spent a lot of time over here on live. And um, I actually brought my druid over here as well and did uh, charm, uh, pet charm um, killing over here. Like, I would get a gorge hound use it to kill other mobs and then release the gorge hound and um kill it and so on and so forth um it's dangerous do you i'm mean, just saying with the combination of the two classes that we got oh yeah this is definitely feasible later on all right let me kill this one and then i'm gonna go afk while you met up all right man let me go ahead and get some uh oh, too late I'll just go ahead and do dark pack then all right, be right back, man. All right. So, yeah, guys, this is pretty sweet. I definitely like the combo. Again, this is going to be still a solo guy. But if I could do every once in a while, something that would be maybe in zones a little too hard for a Necromancer to take on his own, the reason, you know, we were kind of considering this is, wow, this dude over here is just going to be trolling us until we kill him. Because uh, we see Nivris doing Siren's Grotto pretty much all by himself. He duos with another cleric or healer of some kind, mainly a cleric because they have a sea heal. I, I think it would be cool if I could do Siren's Grotto or zones equal to that, maybe playing a mischief or something along those lines. That might actually be plausible for me to do solo. But I think any of those, those really tough zones, especially if you start taking on name guys, guys that, you know, for whatever reason can get a little out of hand, due to their abilities, whether they have a charm or something along those lines. This is a really nasty little spot to sit with all the little roamers. It doesn't really give you a, a safe little... Maybe if I go really, really far in over there at the tunnel, or the gorge, I guess, way over there in the distance, that would be a little bit better, but kind of having to watch my my angles just... Oh, and he happens to... Uh, he's, I was going to say he just stopped to kind of watch me, but no, he's just glitching out. But yeah, so the, the higher level zones, when you have a mob that either charms or direct damages a spell that would normally just wipe the floor with either you or your pet, having somebody else that can augment that one ability or multiple abilities so that you can get in and do what you need to do normally, I think would help you out and make mobs that would normally be unattainable or at least they're on the verge of being unattainable, uh, you know, doable. So we kind of wanted to give this a shot and I think it's working fairly well. I think the, the combination with the snare and the fear is a really good... Who's that? That's another gorge hound, but he is moving really fast. That's Spirit of Wolf right there. Kind of thought that might be a druid running to the zone line, but no, definitely not. Hmm. So if you guys have any other suggestions out there of good duos that you want to see us try out from time to time, rarely, but uh, we'll definitely give it a shot. Let me go ahead and give me some more dark pack. Now, I do have the book. We did talk about that on one of the earlier videos. Uh, Chupa got it for me, and we're going to talk to him about what he had to do, where he had to go to get that one. For those of you who are interested, maybe thinking about getting it for yourself, I uh, definitely would suggest it. Unfortunately, we cannot use it until level 20, and I'm not too far away from that. If we keep doing like this, uh, I probably will be able to get my level by tonight and maybe a little bit more into the next one uh, before we end it there. And then, 
you know, sometime in the future, a little bit more soloing over here, trying out other zones. Again, I am open to all suggestions on places to go. I want to try out a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I don't want to kind of sit in one spot too much, but the Kranas kind of weird, you know, like I, I did not like them very much in the sense that I didn't like coming over here with my cleric because there's just not a lot of group spots. KFC is one of the rare exceptions. My Shadow Knight, he spent a lot of time killing the guards on the bridge next to uh, North Karana's simply because he was waiting for his spots to kind of open up at KFC back on live when it first came out. None of my other tunes really had any other reason to come over here unless, you know, somebody I happen to know like Thum was over here on his druid killing off uh, crag spiders. I would come over here and join them for a little bit. Ah, and it looks like we got Shoops back, so let's go ahead and grab this little area right here. Letting, letting sexy out. <laughs> uh, one thing I was going to ask you, man, is the uh, the Words of Darkness, the book that you got me. Mm -hmm. If you want to tell the guys at home, what did you have to do? What, what's the most difficult part of that quest? Um, I have really bad luck. Well, not with yours, apparently, but with mine when I got it from my necro. The book in permafrost off the icy goblin um, took me five days of four hours minimum per day camping it. Jeez, were you getting experience at the very least or no? Hell no, dude. Uh, so were you camping anything else in there while you were waiting for that? Maybe going after the mammoth cloak and a few other items, or? I was at one point, and then more people started coming in, like experience groups. So I stopped doing that, and I just stayed in that one room. There's right. there's three spawns in that room. I didn't want to be a complete ass about it, so. No, and I get that, but I mean, a lot of the time, that zone, not the busiest of, uh, of zones because it's kind of hard to get to, and, yeah. you know, it's just, it's kind of buggy. There's a lot of mobs that will, like, phase through walls or not follow you down the direct path that you would think they would, and they go back to the, yeah, it's crazy. Like, you'll, you'll end up with a huge train when you don't really want it to be there. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. Now, there is a named guy over here that drops the Lionhide backpack, right? Uh, wrong zone. That's in South Carolina. Oh, okay. So you needed the the item from Permafrost. What else did you need? You need a uh, book from um, Shadow Man. Over um, any in Shadow Man. Neck? Um, Nectulos, Lava Storm, wherever Shadow Men spawn, they have a chance of dropping a book that you turn in to get a note. Um, and then you also need a book from a mob in Lake Wrath. Um, that one is difficult because the mob that spawns in Lake Wrath, um, she has a companion next to her that is much higher than she is and is a wizard that will nuke your face off. So soloing that area is more It's difficult. It's, it's, it's a little difficult. Um, the first time I did it with Athlar, I died. What? <laughs> At what level? And he was 54 at the time. Oh, man. So not the easiest quest to do unless maybe you have a group with you at around level 30s. And... Yeah, you definitely want help. I mean, because I think the guy's like level 40-something. 40, 40 He's 40... I want to say 42. I don't know. I could be completely off. But um, after that, I think it's just 300 gold, right, mm -hmm. that I gave you. Um, you turn those items in to an NPC in Temple of Solstice Row... Uh, the two books, the note, and the uh, 300 gold, and you are done. The Shadow Man, though, that you have to kill, the item that you got is not the only item that Shadow Man actually drop. They drop a ton of items for a bunch of different quests. And one of the things that they drop is used in crafting for armor. Uh, <coughs> Essence of Shadow. And so you can go ahead and build up a nice supply of that uh, if you happen to be over there camping that, and... They, they pay a good little bit for that item. Yeah. Yeah, Cypher. Um, Cypher's the one that told me about it. I never really paid attention because um, I don't craft. I don't I do not do it's, – it's for a cultural armor, I think. It's for the um, Dark Elf temper, mm -hmm. um, whatever their cultural armor temper is. I can't remember what, it, what it's called. But um, It's good stuff, yeah, and he, it's a higher level thing too. Yeah, he asked me to keep an eye for it. I'm like, bro, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, man. I've never seen it drop. <laughs> right. And then it dropped, and it looks like an onyx. And I'm like, oh, I probably had a ton of these and didn't even know it and just freaking destroyed them or sold them to a vendor. Who knows? I think most people probably would. So I was kind of mentioning it when you, if you're going to be doing that quest, you know, keep an eye out for it and you can make a little bit of money back. I mean, 300 plat or not 300 plat, 300 gold is not going to pretty much break anybody at level 30. You should probably have 300 gold to spare. 
But if you can walk away after doing that quest with another, you know, 40, 50 plat on you, you know, so much the better. Yeah, when Cypher, when I told Cypher I either sold or, or destroyed those t uh, items, he about had a heart attack. <laughs> he camped it for, I think, a couple weeks just to get 10. And we yeah, we used yeah. those 10 in a matter of seconds. Yeah, when, real quick. When we were making those armor. The funny thing was, I mean, I, I, I don't really recall looting them. I really don't. Um, but I just let I may have just I may have just let them, left them on there. Because, yeah, when I'm doing Shadowman, when I'm killing Shadowman, I'm killing for very specific drops. I'm killing either for the stone that you use for the Rod of Insidious Glamour. Or for the scythe for the um, harvester quest, which I got to get you one of those soon for your necromancer as well. And then uh, the rapier for um, the J boots. Okay. Those are the main. Those are the main three items that I hunt for on any given time because you can turn around those those quest items pretty fast. Tell us a little bit about the harvester. Like, what what exactly does that do? Um, the harvester is a necromancer. It looks like a scythe. It's mm -hmm. a necromancer. It's not a weapon. It's a handheld item primary or secondary and it has some int based stats like it'll have like i don't know three or five intellects something like that maybe some hit points on it the the nice thing about it though it's uh, a one effect of dead eye Ooh, which so which is um uh, cn viz and ultra vision so if you're not a dark elf it's pretty <laughs> handy i was gonna say the dark elf don't really need it but it, it's kind of nice for the cn viz at least yeah, it's nice to put on every so often whenever you need see these druids over here doing uh charm killing. Yeah, it's as pro, that one's blue, but they're gonna take it. Do yeah, um so it's it's not bad. I mean it looks cool too. I have it on, on my necromancer as well. And you said it was a uh, ranged or No, uh primary secondary. Mm, I don't know. I kinda like both of mine. Maybe I could do it secondary. Well, you have the book, right? Yeah. So I can In one of that. yours? You, yeah, you could replace the book. You'd definitely not get rid of that bow. I'm sorry. The bow ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I got another gorge hound over here. I'll leave my griffin on there, my pet on the other one. No, actually, he's going to switch. Let's kill this gorge hound first. He's, he hits harder. Go ahead and tap him if you want. Don't worry about... Oh, never mind. Uh, so oh, no. Got to get another one. Oh, man. You want me to fear that one? <laughs> nope, nope, nope. All right, I want to sit down. Let's see, Gorge uh, Griffon's coming back. Your pet just moved to. Oh crap! We're gonna get another. We're gonna get another Gorge Hound. Nope, he's making a beeline towards you. Um, you have faint death, right? I do. Flop. You sure? Yep. Cause uh, you know we're good right now. Nope, flop. Oh, come on. All right, I'm down. Can we back my pet off or leave him on that one? Oh, Griffon's I don't coming. Think you're, I don't think you're fan death work, dude. You sure? I'm positive. Yep. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> they're, they're still on you. I have no mana. I'm going to die here. Yeah, low health aggro. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh, it's so close. Four for sit. Come on. Come on. Ten for sit. Oh, he got oh, me. Oh, dude. <laughs> and now he's running. What a butt. Whew. All right. Well, you know, that was kind of a little chaotic. A lot of bombs out there. I think my fear caused more trouble than it was probably worth. Probably shouldn't have done that one. Yeah, when we're out here, uh, we probably won't fear anymore because it's, it's pretty packed. Still not too bad. The, I can take the hits. Yeah, it's not too, too bad. I can take the hits, though. Yeah, because you got the, the armor on you. Normally, I would suggest we pull closer to the wall because I think that would yes. be a little safer for us. But in the end, not uh, not too horrible. That's the second time my feign death has failed. And they weren't casting on me. I wasn't casting. And there is nothing. There's no reason for it to have failed. So I think the Necromancer's feign death sucks really bad compared <laughs> to the monks. It's just a roll of the dice, man. Uh, no, not as not so I, I, much with my um, with my monk. The monk feign death works almost every single time. Man, I think it has to do with with a couple of different variables like proximity to mob, how much health you have. I think all that plays a part into it because I noticed that when I am getting lower on health, if I'm like less than twenty percent and I try to feign death, I'm done. It'll fail or or something. I ha I don't know. So just bad juju. 
That's a lot like the Fane Death I remember from my Shadow Knight. The Fane Death on my Shadow Knight yeah. was just abysmal. It always seemed exactly. to go off in the it wrong spot. always fails. Yep, always fails at the worst moment. Are you bound here? Yeah, I'm right at the bridge. Mm. Okay. Do you want me to bring my, your corpse to you? Uh, if you want, let me uh, give you Yeah, that'll set. be easier, man. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, nice druid. Where you at? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I should give you spirit. Yeah. Man, are you serious? What's that? Gorge hounds just keep jumping on me. Yeah, it's a rough spot. Yeah, this spot right here is pretty it's pretty packed with mobs. I don't think I'd actually be able to do that spot with my shit or with my uh my necromancer into the point where they probably wouldn't be giving me very much experience if I was able to take that many on without dying. Yeah, I mean, for for that, it's pretty bad. Yeah, I'm running down the beach. I'll meet you halfway. I always forget when I jump into the water, I can't have F9 on. Otherwise, it messes up the F9 button again. And a dark stalker jumped me, too. Good grief, man. You're doing good. See if I can find you out there. But yeah, I remember with my Shadow Knight, the Fane Death was a work in progress. It seemed like you had to be very cautious. Most of the time, you wanted to have your back against a wall so you couldn't be interrupted, you couldn't be knocked back. And if you were standing in just like some spots on the map, it just seemed like the Fane Death never worked on those areas. You had to move away from that. Um, is that you out there? I'm still next to your body. Okay, I see where you're at then. This dude's like double attacking me for 36 points of damage, man. It hurts. <laughs> well, you don't have the pet out there to give you a little bit of cover either. Because yeah, he was doing yeah, so like... much. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was allowing me to, um, what you call it, to do, uh, Thanks, Dad. yeah, I would try to evade and every so often work. All right, do I have a corpse on? Yeah, I do. Where are you at? I'm are right you, on the, down are the you on the wall? No, no, I'm right down the road. You keep coming down. You're in biz? No. I'm just, I'm winging it. Okay, I'm going to take you to the wall. Oh, poor town. Yeah, I like to live dangerous out here. No, I just actually gotten very, oh, I think I got one. Maybe. Just bring it. Yeah, just bring it. Nope. No, you, he's just running okay. in the same direction. You are up on the wall, sir. Yeah, I'm getting very accustomed to just kind of running through these zones willy-nilly with my uh, cleric. It's kind of hard to break that habit. You think you're still uber when you're not anymore. Yeah, I'm 59. <clears throat> Give me some experience while you're looting. Yeah, but harvester is not a bad. It's not a bad item just to have in case you're somewhere that you need to have C and Viz up to. I mean, mob C and Viz, whatever. And you don't want to reload your spells. Right. Let's see what is he con? Okay, so he's dark blue. That's a good pet. Yeah, I have to say one of the downsides to leveling with a necromancer is just the inevitable level where you get nothing but greens. And it's just kind of heartbreaking to see it. It is. I, I stopped trying uh, at 24, actually. I stopped trying to get max level pets with my Necromancer. I just take whatever I got and go. Well, at the very end, like right when you, one level before you get a new pet, there's only like one in like 50 that you're actually going to get that blue. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm bringing it back to you, man. I think the main reason why I stopped trying to do it anyways was the fact that the way I play my Necromancer... Um, I, I don't I don't need a max level pet. Cause you're just using a what for extra DPS? Yep, it's it's basically just a long term dot. I fear kite, I, I stack um two dots, well three dots with the slow, and just go to town. Let it just tick away. If you want, go ahead and save your mana and just send the pet in for right now. Okay. Um I want I wanna see how this goes with just Face tank and stuff. Have and you tried soloing your... these things? 
Uh, yeah, I was stolen with you when when you had died. Oh, uh, that's keep right. I keep fine. an eye on your left over there. Get that gorge down. Yeah. Yeah. When you went AFK earlier, not only did we get gorge hounds, we got um, a couple griffins, and and the gorge hounds were really a nuisance. We There's a griffin coming up your back right now. We might be a little too close to these other guys. We might be taking some of their pools. If you want to move a little bit. Yeah, we can. Or I think they're moving either way. Okay. Uh, oh wow, your phone just spawned right there. In front, <laughs> yeah, too. he sure did. Let's see. Ah, you know, I'm still actually making more experience than I lost, so that's not bad at all. Good, good, good. Yeah, let's move a little bit further down. Yeah, I'm bringing one right now. We can just move closer to this bandit camp, and we should be okay over here. I think. Right here is good. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I just don't want them to feel like we're crowding them. Yeah, even though we're there first. <laughs> Maybe, but the zone's big enough, and some people feel very, like, comfortable in one spot, and they don't like going anywhere else. With us, I kind of like exploring. I got into that habit when I played originally. Like, I, I found a good spot, and I didn't want to go anywhere. But this time around, I, I don't want to be just confined to one little area and only know the zone, like, a 10-foot radius. Right. Because there's so many different places you can go. And sometimes exploring those options, you find a better cap where you find something that suits your particular style of gameplay. Sometimes you don't. <laughs> sometimes you die a lot more and you're like, why did I ever leave that area? But uh, Give me know. one. Give me one so I got to change something real quick. All right. No worries. But yeah, I, I, I do that a little bit still nowadays. You guys will notice that we favor some of the zones out there like Soul B tends to be one of our favorite places to go during certain levels and we probably should try out city of mist a little bit more me and you and a couple of the other guys we did city of mist not too long ago and i wasn't f very familiar with the way that zone worked because it's been a long time since i've been there and i haven't been really back there on this server since we came back and it was fun like i liked it very crowded a lot of people but still really cool I don't know if you have a favorite spot in City of Mist, or you're actually doing something so hold off, but... Um, moat. Really? I love the moat. Yeah, I really do love the moat. Is that because there's just so much to pull, and it takes a little bit of skill to do so, or...? Uh, yeah. There's there's a lot going on at moat. You can pull from inside if you really get ballsy about it. Dude, um, like, that's a hard place to break. That, that's nasty. You, you need... Well, it's even harder now with the, the changes to monks to uh, sneak and stuff. But, um... No, we used to have a monk that would sit down at the door and let like four reavers come out. He'd back up and then flop it and wait for one of them, you know, for them to turn around and just tag the last one. That was always nice. Oh, you can't do that anymore. Not, not that simple. No. But if you no. can split them up, you know, if you can bring them out and maybe like the only thing I can think of is using one of those spider webs that you get from um, yeah, Crystal the Caverns. Webs. Yeah. Yeah. And then letting the other ones go back. Like that's an option. Or if you happen to have a Shadow Knight that you can trust not to have his feigned death fail on him 40 times in a row. He can snare him with Dooming Darkness. You can still do it with a monk. It just, it takes a lot more finesse um, and a lot more teamwork from the other members of the group. Yeah. But I like that. It kind of pulls you together and lets you learn another class a little bit, even though you're not playing them, and lets you figure out how best to kind of augment that area. Yeah, strengths and weaknesses. I mean, that's the whole point of having a group, right? Yeah. I mean, we've, we've made some completely jacked up groups like the synergy that we have should not work whatsoever and sometimes it shows i mean we get our faces ran into a lot it it actually tends to work out more often than not because we're very familiar with how the other person plays and you don't sometimes you guys don't even have to ask for help and we just know that you need it because of the way you're running towards yeah. us yeah i mean the, the way you guys always rooted mobs as far as cc um, a lot of folks don't do that. They don't. A lot of clerics don't, for some reason, keep root memorized, um, which is weird to me. I always did all the way from like level one, just for my own survivability. You have exactly. You have to because this face is too pretty. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> you kind of. You know, if you don't do it, at some point the warrior is going to be too busy. It happens. He's going to have four mobs. There's no point in him getting the fifth mob. It's just not going to be a thing. And so you got to be able to root that guy and just move away. And sometimes I'm at like 20% by the time I get it rooted. And that's... No, 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. Nah, I was just going to say that little bit of mana that you're wasting on a root can be kind of painful for a cleric to spend. But in the end, if you die, you're losing all of it. And the thing is, too, like earlier, you know, we were in Solby with um, your warrior, my sh- my shaman, and um, Cypher's uh, bard. And I was using my basic level 9, I think, root. Like root root, not instill or anything like that, because instill. I, I found that instill, like the other higher level shaman roots, um, they're not as reliable, and they cost way too much mana. None of the roots that clerics get are reliable in any way, what shape or form, except for the very last one. Once you get the one at fifty six or fifty seven, uh, it's a game changer. It lasts for three minutes, almost a hundred percent of the time. There's a little bit, you know, of the time where it's not quite three minutes, but it's still like two and a half. To two minutes yeah that's is it immobilized what, what is it what's that one called call oh I can't remember. man um i cannot remember the name of that one it's two words it's two words it is it is the same for a shaman though it's the 50 something root is the one that's the end all be all before that it's recommended just to use your first root spell like legit root see i didn't it's, do that it's a it's a quick cast it's really fast it's dirt cheap it doesn't last a whole lot a lot of time but it's reliable See, I didn't do that. I used the ones as I leveled up. And I think for the most part, if it landed and it didn't get resisted in one shape or form, because sometimes you can land a spell, but it still gets partially resisted. So instead of lasting like 30 seconds, it only lasts for like five. Yeah, you get that 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 roll on the server side, that uh, magic check, and it just it's not in your favor. Yeah. But I mean... That hurts. If you can get it where it doesn't get resisted even remotely, having that 30 seconds, 45 seconds root, it's really a lifesaver in a lot of situations. Whereas the other one, if it doesn't get resisted, it only lasts for like five seconds, and then I'm standing back up anyways. Uh, That is just, it doesn't really work very well. Yeah, since since I started doing it with the regular root now, um, I only changed it recently because I was doing some research, and I was like, man, why don't I just use, because it's a really super fast cast. Two seconds is nothing. Um... I've I've had really good luck with it lately. It helps a lot. Yeah. What? Especially if I can just snap that root real quick. It's it's different for a shaman because the main reason why I do it is I can snap a root real fast, pull back just enough, and then get my slow. Right. Once I have the slow on, I don't care. You come at me. I don't. I, at that point, it doesn't matter. It's very different than for a cleric because a cleric, you're really only rooting if there's a lot of mobs, and those mobs they need to kind of stay still for a good period of time. Because it takes, you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds for a mob to be burned down by the group. And if you got three or four mobs already, that other guy he has to sit there for like a minute and a half before anybody even gets to him. So you don't want it to be wearing off very, very quickly. But again, with your shaman, uh, the, the subtle differences between playing one class or the other. Did this dude just leave the Scorch Hound here? What's going on? Is it his pet? Nope. Oh, there it goes. He must have just zoned. It was just wandering with 73% health, and then it wouldn't attack me. Hmm. It's kind of strange. Well, you thought you about coming don't that now. But I was kind of thinking in the back of my mind when you were talking about the monk pulling out those reavers, would it be possible for the monk to pull out the four reavers, and as they're walking back, have a cleric single um, law, three of them, and that way when he went back, only one would come out? Um... I don't know. I don't know. Um, what I've seen happen um, with some groups, and this is risky, okay? Because I mean, you're talking about ink casters are basically either glass cannons or just you know Paper. whatever, right? Yeah, wet wet napkins. Um, I saw this one group the other day while I was watching somebody stream, and the monk would pull out all the reavers, bring them out to the middle of that catwalk area right there where it splits off into the T mm-hmm. um, in front of the door. And then their enchanter would do a mass, um, an area effect mez, and then a membler. And so <sighs> you know. they would, and then uh, lull or some, something. And then they were pulling one at a time. It, it, it's just, a, it's a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, it comes down to the enchanter. Like, I would trust it if it was Nibers doing it. I think this enchanter is just decked out, though. They had to have 200-plus charisma. Yeah. Well, I think that's coming down as the key for, for an enchanter. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely want to be, you know, 180-plus before you start getting some, you know, brave. Oh, I would almost go that if you're going to be a group enchanter, you want more charisma than you want intel, which is 
kind of backwards with every other class out there that you would imagine, but enchanters, you got to be able to charm, you got to be able to mez, and the less it breaks on you, the more likely you are to survive, because when that thing breaks, you just go down so fast. That's your job, dude. That is flat out your job. Your job is to mez, not to nuke or anything else, so uh, the mana pays out, because enchanters are using the level 4 mez until, you know, whatever, right. until 50s. What? No, that's not true, because I thought the area effect stuns and things of that Six, sort... That's, six, that's 16, yeah. Were, the area effect mez is 16. But Niper still keeps his level 4 mez memorized. Yeah, well, I hear that one doesn't uh, get resisted as much sometimes, and yep. you know, if you're using it for the right situation, you know it's going to help you out. But I think with Enchanter's situational awareness and what skills and what spells you have play a huge role. You want to get brave on this, man? I mean, well, you know, that guy killed me last time, so I am all for giving that guy some... You know what I'm looking at, right? Yeah, the evil eye out there. Mm -hmm. Remember, he does have a pet, so if we're going to give that guy a shot, uh, I am full fear, mana. I'm full mana. Fear the pet? Yeah. Fear I'll, the pet? I'll fear him. All right. Uh, I'm, oh, my goodness. I'm going to die, and I'm already I'm bound all the way in West Freeport. Come on, but... Oh, he just hasted his pet. What an ass. Give him clothes. Get, oh, my face. Come on. Here we go. Look at, that, look at that sexy barrel rolls when I'm sparkly. All right. Are you good? Yep, I'm good. All right. Okay, evil eye. Let's go ahead and give this guy a snare. You want me to fear him too? Oh, my goodness. This dude is not taking hit. There we go. Now he's getting hit. Oh, I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, he resisted the fear anyways. You're still good on life. Let me go ahead and dot this guy up to the... No I don't think I even need to. Evil Eye Pet is back? Don't die, dude. No, I can't I'm see anything good. still. Good. There we go. I'm Oh, wow. This dude is 25%. Yeah, you guys are kicking his butt. Oh, uh, let me... Okay, no, you're good. Good. You're good. It's you're just because he was resisting my fear, so he got a little bit more damage on me than I would normally like. Yeah, dead mother... Mm. <laughs> Oh, Pull your rubbish. pet back. Pull your pet back. Yep, don't worry about this. I'll stay out here. I just don't want your pet dragging wolves and hounds and stuff with you. Right. Ah, uh, you got another wolf on you? Good grief, this dude is... <laughs> he's making a beeline towards you. You didn't like me. Oh, that's cool. No, don't worry about fearing him. He's, he's gonna die here in a minute. He's hard. <laughs> really, he doesn't get a hit on me. Ah, uh, touche, that's true. There we go. Get life. Oh, you. Ah, I'm stunned. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it right at the end. I just probably should have just switched over to the gorge. No, you're good. As long as I mean, as long as you're getting what you need to out of the out of the spell. Wow, he he debuffed me, disempowered me. That dude sucks. Yeah, I think we should stay away from that dude. I and mean, this guy's not too much better. Fame death, fame death. I'm gonna back off so you can go ahead and tap him a few times if you want. I'm low on light, or mana. This is, that's all I got. Okay. <laughs> so we did it, guys. I, I don't know if it was 100% worth it to uh, take that guy on. I wasn't paying attention to the experience gain off of that, but I did have the bar up. If you guys are kind of interested, uh, maybe you guys were watching. Or um, you can scroll back and, and see what that was. I'm going to go up here and see what he dropped. I'm kind of curious. Probably some nerves. <laughs> uh, he dropped one gold, five silver, six copper. And that's it. Aren't there a lot of those over in the Beholder Mains, right? There's a named eyeball there or something? Are, yeah, there's a, there, I think there's a couple of named. Um, but there's three of them that spawn in the middle of the Beholder's Maze. Around like a throne of sorts. Uh, they are for the ones in there, anyways. I think are the only ones that drop the optic nerves. I may be wrong, but that's for um, crafted wrists, I believe, for the uh, where nah, armor quests. I was just saying, like, if you are going to go in there and you got to do any of that stuff, those guys are going to be on the menu, and that's going to be a tough little cookie to kind of crack. There's three of them close together too. So if you're not high level, I th I think you'll get all three. Ugh, uh, exactly. One was enough. <laughs> I don't necessarily even want to do another one of those. Exactly.
But guys, we're going to go ahead and end the episode here. I hope you guys have enjoyed the uh, duoing with the Necromancer. Again, I did tell you we were going to solo with this guy, and we pretty much will for the majority. But every once in a while, we may try our hand at some some kind of uh, weird action between two different characters and see just how well they work. I think the combination of these is uh, doable at higher levels. Right now, I, I wasn't doing very much, to be honest. I was just kind of sitting back letting uh, Choops do his thing with his epic rogue here. But at higher level... There's going to be situations where he's not going to be able to tank those, no matter how epic his gear is. And with fear and the snare, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But I'm kind of looking forward to those days when we can get up there. As always, guys, I'm AC Gamer. I'm Chupacabra. Till next time. Subscribe. Hey, guys, and welcome to the disembodied voice of AC Gamer. We are definitely going to be doing a lot more series in the future, but here are a few of them that you guys might find interesting. Of course, you're more than welcome to check them out. I would love to hear your comments. Again, if you do enjoy these videos, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe. It's definitely the indicator that I use to uh, tell if you guys want to see more videos like that of that particular game style of that uh, you know series in the long run so when you guys leave comments down it helps me decide whether we should keep doing it as well as whether you want to see games like that in the future and here are a few of them right here I kind of picked out uh, a few of different genres we will be doing spotlights for other youtubers in the future so if you uh, want to get a little shout out definitely let me know if you group with me uh, chances are you will get a shout out in here eventually. But for now, these are just uh, four series that I have that I feel like uh, could use a little bit more attention and that you guys might actually enjoy as well. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we will definitely catch you all next time.